So we're talking about making plans um, and what portfolio does. So those who, uh, as a show of hands, um, everyone here is using Jira or is not, or is anyone not using Jira? Let's start with that. Anyone not using Jira? Okay, a couple people. Don't worry, a lot of stuff we're going to do today, it's, it's in Jira, but it's, as long as you get the concept and Jira is essentially just a database of issues, um, everything else will, will, will sit on top of that. Um, so Jira has been used a lot of places um, and it's often been, especially in big companies I've found, these little islands of agile, little teams, a dev team here that spun up an instance and they started using it. And Jira's always excelled down at this team level. So you've got scrum boards and Kanban boards down here and small teams working together in Jira and it's fantastic. Um, the problem we had was when you get to more and more teams using it and, and bigger companies finally accepting, okay, that's a great tool, let's use it. They said, we still need to be able to report on it properly and consolidate everything you're doing and, and plan ahead. Um, even if we're agile, um, we still need to make sure that we have all of our waterfall documentation in place. Um, so we need something else to actually start a higher top-down view from that. And that's very much what Portfolio does. It comes in, it sits across the top of everything that's happening and looks at all that information and, and rolls it up into a nice way that we can report on it um, and, and leverage the information to move forward. I'm always amazed at how many people have Jira instances and at all this information, because it is, I mean, it really is just a database at the back end, of all this great information about all the work you're working on, how long it took, who did the work, and you never leverage it to do anything better with it. There's so much rich data in there and it doesn't take much to actually use it to do something really useful. And that's pretty much what Portfolio is doing. Um, those who are sort of trying to do scaled agile or anything or they've got different sort of levels, you can slot a program level in here as well, absolutely. Um, the, same, the same sort of topology, if you like, applies as we go along. And we'll touch on how we actually do this in real life as we're moving along. Now, in order, so this is very much what uh, Portfolio does. It takes what you've always been doing in Jira over here, those who use it. Uh, it takes your teams and your teams just carry on working the way they always have uh, using their boards and it just rolls up into a nice portfolio plan as simple as that. Great. Now in terms of making plans, whether you're using Jira Portfolio, Microsoft Project, pen and paper, doesn't matter, the same principles apply. You need to do the same things. You need three things to make a plan. You need something to plan for. You said tasks, so it could be a projects in Jira, um, it could be a Kanban board, it could be anything else. It's like, what is the work that we have not done that we need to do? And that's what I'm looking at. We also need some people to do said work, otherwise you'll be there all day. So we need some resources and people. And the third thing you need is time. And these things are all totally, like, uh, there's a real strong relationship between them. If I add more tasks, if I've got more work to plan for, I either need more time to do it or more people or somewhere in between those two. If I have less time, my deadline comes towards me and I've got less time, I either have to take some tasks out or throw more resources at it. It's keeping it in balance and that's all that portfolio is doing. It's looking at these three elements and just keeping them in balance. So when something happens over here, it's saying, well, you've got to do something over here to keep it. And all we're doing for each of these three things is just tweaking the levers up and down in a sandbox environment until we get a plan that we're happy with and great, let's communicate that to the rest of the team. So that's what we're going to look at today. Basically, understanding that portfolio is not this scary thing. Um, as a show of hands, who's used portfolio before? Or tried to use it? Had a look at it? Play with it? Okay, great. Um, have you looked? Is that portfolio one mainly, mostly? So portfolio one came out and it was fantastic. There was this high barrier to entry, perceived high barrier to entry, um, which was it kind of, it was hard to get your head around what you were doing because it's so clever. It's doing so many clever things and it's like whack-a-mole because you change something over here and something over here started changing and you were never quite sure. So unless you had that kind of understanding of what it is doing in the background and how the scheduling algorithm is working, then it was very hard to then go to the next level and, um, and start using it properly. So hopefully that's what we'll point out today. It's actually, it's very clever what it's doing, but in terms of what you need to understand, there's not too much once you've had it pointed out to you. So we're gonna look at today, how, what can we change in each of these three things to get a plan that we want? And it's as simple as that. <laughs>